Joining me here in our roundtable, Angela Rye, co-founder and principal at Impact Strategies, political consultant Raynard Jackson, Michelle Bernard, president and CEO of the Bernard Center for Women, and Steve Clemens, Washington editor at large for Atlantic Live. Folks, welcome back to Washington Watch. If there was one thing that's been bothering me this past week is watching uh, folks have the audacity to somehow suggest that the alleged Boston bombers, uh, the young man who uh, is in custody, somehow should be declared an enemy combatant as if we have no history in this country of providing Miranda rights and actually trying domestic terrorists uh, according to our own U.S. Constitution. I don't understand how even in this case you should just somehow give up rights and just say they, they really don't mean anything just because of this terror attack in Boston. I think there's one thing in particular that you have to keep in mind, though, Roland, in dealing with such a delicate situation. Um, when he was originally apprehended, um, the questioning immediately began as soon as he came to consciousness. And one thing that's been talked about a lot in the press is the fact that um, the courts intervened um, when the FBI believed they were on the verge of hearing something from him um, under this public safety exception that exists for Miranda rights. Um, and the courts intervened and they, they stepped in and said, you know, it's time for us to Mirandize this, this suspect. Um, so there's a very delicate balance um, that you have and a very careful line you have to walk with protecting the homeland um, and with ensuring that with, folks with, have their rights protected. With all due protected. respect, I completely disagree, but in the, in the nicest way. Sure. Uh, I don't believe this country, with people in this country, should ever withdraw rights from anyone. We saw after World War II or during World War II how this was done to Japanese Americans. You saw that's not what America is about. America is about showing its norms in the toughest time of times, not the best of times. And in this particular case, it was, it was outrageous because we've had other times in American history, particularly in the late 1960s, when you had a far greater uh, incidents of this kind of domestic uh, terrorism inside the United States. Those people, you know, had, had the law uh, both protecting the public's interests and protecting the interests of those that might have been accused of these, of, of these crimes. And so there's nothing wrong with our criminal justice system. We entered into a phase uh, during the Iraq War, during the Bush-Cheney administration, where we created a gray war of rules and laws that most of the world doesn't accept. And we're now trying to get out of that. And we're seeing it propagate now in our domestic political scene. And it's a tragedy. It's a really, really bad thing. So I'm glad that we didn't make that decision and that ultimately we did uh, uh, read the suspect. Uh, his Miranda rights. I, 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 sitting back, and when I was watching the calls for us to look at these, look at this fellow as an enemy combatant, none of it seemed genuine. None of it rang true to me. Uh, to me, it literally looked like political pandering. And I never, for once, took the comment that the calls to do this in any way seriously. To me, it looked like people who were trying to get on television, get their voices heard, and maybe have some far right wing constituents say, yeah, get those Chechens. It just, it didn't seem real at all. I don't take them seriously. But I think about Eric Rudolph, mm -hmm. the gentleman who was responsible for the Centennial Park uh, bombing at the Olympics in Atlanta, 1996. I think about Timothy McVeigh, who killed 168 people in Oklahoma City. The, look, I totally get in terms of this whole notion of a war on terror. Mm -hmm. But the moment Americans stand here and say that our soldiers are fighting for our rights, fighting for our way of life, fighting for our constitution, and then we turn around and somehow say, oh, let's throw the same constitution out the window, that to me is absolutely uh, insanity. Yeah, I think, I think this is a very simple argument. He's an American citizen. It happened on U.S. soil, so he's protected, and he deserves his Miranda rights. Now, if he was an American citizen in a foreign country blowing up U.S. assets, to me, you can have a legitimate argument about this. But by him being an American citizen, it's not even an argument. But don't you have I, a I question, though? Like, why is it the same people continue to forget all of the wrongs of the nation's history? After, after Katrina, there were, they had little prisons set up all over New Orleans before they were able to save anybody who needed water. And they were locking up people who looked like, quote unquote, Muslims or Arabs because they thought that they would use Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina as a way to bring to, uh, to terrorism to the United States, it was wrong, and we do it over and, and over all, and, and over again. it's always wrong. I mean, that's the thing. It's always wrong. 
Uh, and I think it's important for Americans. We're going to be challenged and tested. There'll be other cases of domestic terrorism. We won't know who that is. And to think that you can have a subjective scale on when you basically have uh, uh, the rights that Americans are guaranteed uh, or not. I'll tell you what's interesting is that a lot of people look at Russia today and Vladimir Putin, and there's a lot of criticism about a, the slipping scale of democracy there and the fact that people don't have rights and that you're having executions, etc. Uh, and and um, you know, in my view, it's very important for the United States to maintain its 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 legal codes and and to be the beacon on the hill so that we can criticize what's going on abroad. But if we do this kind of thing, you can't criticize Vladimir Putin in Russia. You can't you can't criticize thuggish regimes that that throw out their constitutions. I definitely understand what everyone's saying, but the public safety exception is not indefinite. It replies for a specific amount of time. The court intervened because they thought that amount of time had passed. I think it is so important for us not to treat the Constitution like a strict black and white document. It is a living, breathing document, and it evolves based on certain principles. That's why I went to law school. There are all types of exceptions to the law, and you have to definitely deal with them very carefully. You can't just say, this is the way that we are going to apply this. this is the blanket rule, you just never know. And I think it's really dangerous for us to live in absolutes. Well, look, I, I agree living in absolutes. But I think what really what really concerns me, uh, to Steve's point, is is when you when you start going down that road, no question. all of a sudden you have people who are trying to apply an enemy combatant to virtually anything. Right. I mean, if that's the case, let's just go ahead and ship the guy to Guantanamo uh, yeah. without even charging him. And I think to Ray Nara's point, when it happens on U.S. soil, and like it or not, this is an American citizen. You know, so it's not like this is a, somebody who came uh, from another country. Uh, he's, you know, here, uh, slipped into the country. He is still an American citizen. And I think you still have to contend with the rights of being an American citizen. And you can't just, just give that up and say that even if this person is an alleged bomber, and somehow you give up those particular rights, because again, without our rights, Without our laws, what makes us so different and so unique from some other country? 